So I was showing at the end of the last video, if you wanted to divide up your flat color, what you can do is paint on a copy layer, I have it right here, of your line art, you rasterize it, you unlock it, and you can paint the divider. Let's see, if I turn off all the color, you'll see it. I'm basically making it a solid connection. So then I can use my magic wand on that duplicate layer. Oh, got to be on the right layer. And then I can select just that area to then fill on my flat color. Like so, right? There we go. And then I can decide what edge I want more. And then I can always just go right onto my flat color and paint it as well. So now we're getting into doing variations on our flat color. And in Photo P, you get this kind of bad anti-aliasing at the edges. But you don't need to go around and paint all of that in around each selection. Instead, once you're happy with your flat color, which takes some doing, you know, it's tricky. Then what you're going to do, let's see, and I can just keep adjusting this and perfecting it as I go, but I'm just going to continue that lesson I've showed you a little bit. You can just divide shapes up with your paintbrush and then use the paint bucket. Actually, I think I want to color more like this for right there. Or even a variation on this color. Just brighten that up a little bit. There we go. All right. So now, what can we do with the flat colors we've chosen. Let's see. Yeah, I think I like. So I hopefully I've showed you how versatile, once you've filled in everything, how easy it is to, to change them up, right? On a white background, on a gray background, on a black background, right? You get to see how your flat colors are operating. Now, on a gray background, with my line art turned on and locked, so I don't need this duplicate anymore. Ah. The delay in Photo P is bugging me, so I, I realized I forgot to close Photoshop earlier, so hopefully that will help. Close any programs you don't need. And I have a lot of tabs open. Okay, so now... You can always bring a vector in as long as you're at a high enough resolution, which is 11 by 14 by 350. Rasterized line art is fine. It will work. So now I'm going to just clean up what I have. I don't really need color reference anymore because now I want to play with variations on my flat color. So if I'm happy with these, I'm going to reduce all of this to just one layer, and that is my flat color layer. This is the most basic sandwich, right? Black bread on the bottom, or white bread on the bottom, black line art on the top, and then this cheese in between. These are my flat colors. I'm going to lock all of that. And I'll tell you about color holds later. They're a special effect. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate my flat color. Command J. And on that duplicate, I'm going to rename it to Duotone Shadows. If we go to my slides, my exhaustive introduction to coloring, right? This is flat color. 
This is duotone color. Duotone color is splitting your local color into a light value and a dark value. The local color of this motorcycle is orange, so the duotone splits it into a light orange and a shadow orange. It's incredibly effective without a whole lot of work. So this is what I did. I took my flat color and I duplicated it onto this layer, which I called duotone shadows, even though I spelled it wrong. I can fix that. Then I go to my image adjustments, just like we did when we were color correcting our compositing. And I go to levels. And I'm going to push my levels, the midtone slider, to the right, about halfway to the corner. So that gives me darker colors, but they also look a little weird. They also look a little saturated. And that's because when things go into shadow, they also lose intensity. They don't just add black, they also lose intensity. So now I go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm going to take the saturation down about halfway. And I did it, but I didn't have the layer turned on. So now I have really strong shadows based on my flat colors. So how do I introduce the duotoning like this? Well, I'm going to use my lasso because I'm going to do this in a way that's called hard edge, which is a really good way to try to control it. In animation, we call it cell shading. And that's where every time you change from a highlight to a shadow within a local color, it has a crisp delineation. So what better tool than the lasso for that? Now, some people like to do it this way, where they do atone the shadows first, and then they cut out the highlights, like I will from the top of the head right now, and then hit delete. Boom. You can see that on black. You can see it on white. Right. Other people like to do it this way. We're going to duplicate the flat. We're going to call it duotone highlights. It really depends on kind of the character of what you are coloring. And now I'm going to push the levels, image adjustment levels, I'm going to push it to the left, not the right, about halfway. And then I'm going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and take the intensity of the saturation down about halfway. So now I have highlights on my flat color. Now what I would cut away would be the shadows. So maybe the shadow of these bangs on the forehead. With my lasso tool and hit delete. Okay. Now you can combine these two and you'll get the whole range of duotone that's possible once photo P catches up with me, right? Where I can cut away first the highlights I want, say from the tips of the hair here and the tips of the ear. And I know they're really extreme right now, but they can always be moderated with opacity. Let's get the edge of the face in highlight. Edge of the ear here in highlight. I like doing it this way. I think this works pretty well. You don't even have to make all that much sense with your light logic about what direction the light is, as long as it's complementing what you have designed. Get a little bit of light from both sides. But the shape you choose matters a lot because you are cutting it out. It's actually making kind of an interior shape. And in some ways it's like drawing your image all over again, like choosing which interior shapes to use. 
But you see how that's giving it a lot more presence. Say with the tongue, maybe I want some of the tongue to stand out more. So I can cut out the highlight. So the tongue at the back of the mouth has more of a shadow. Let's reshape that a little bit. The teeth, what if I want the teeth to have more glint to them? Remember I said don't fill in with white. Instead fill in with like something that's off-white. That's so when you do shadow variations, it can actually change it. The problem with solid white in raster programs is there's no altering it. You can't make solid white or solid black different by brightening or lightening them. They are always the extremes. But if you just push it a little bit, they will change. So maybe these lower teeth, I want to show some highlights on. Cut them out. Now Duotone is incredibly consistent when it's hard-edged. And it, it has a lot of graphic power. That's why we use it in animation a lot. And in kind of commercial graphics like the mascots on cereal boxes. A lot of hard edge duotone. But it is kind of finicky. Getting it where you want it. But you're not really risking anything because remember this is all a duplicate of your flat colors. So I'm, what am I doing again? I'm taking my flat colors, which are the local color, and I made a duotone highlight version of that. And then I also made a duotone shadow version of that. And now I'm cutting out the shadows to reveal the highlights where I think light makes sense. If I want to show fur, I can shape my duotone edge, hard edge. To have a little bit of texture in it, like this. The tongue again, if I want the tongue to be brighter near the front of the mouth, I cut that out. Now I do it this way because flat color alone is not usually, doesn't show up, the local color doesn't show up usually in duotone. What shows up are lighter versions than the local color and darker versions than the local color. And they kind of average to the darker color once you get between them. And Hyde's presentation showed us how subjective and personal and challenging, you know, finding the right colors for things can be. These are just the technical ways that you can achieve those effects. It doesn't mean it's easy. And it's something we'll play with, with this project, even into the next assignment. Because in the next assignment, we'll work on turning these spot illustrations into poster with posters with type design and understanding all the ways in which they could be printed. So I know this hand would cast a shadow on this like mane behind it. And I'm just going to cut, cut it out. Let's see. I made that a lot more complicated than I needed to. 
Remember, you can always alter a selection just by holding down Option to subtract.